In this episode, we're going to take a look at the F-16 V4 standalone mode. All you got to do really is put a... Oh, man. Look at that. Can you see? It's bent. Hey, Dave, this is Jeff. Yeah, um, I was going to do a video on the F-16 standalone capability, um, but I bent the SD card holder, and so now when I put an SD card in there, it's a bit crunchy. Oh, really? It's not supposed to be crunchy. Hi, welcome to Kenna Spader Christmas. Okay, so things have changed a little bit. Got a, got a new studio. It's the same place. You used to be over here. Now you're over here. I got a new computer. Should be easier to make videos. We'll see. I don't know. We're, we're, we're taking it for a test drive right now. So before I broke the SD card slot on my controller, I had planned on doing a video on uh, setting up the F-16 as an FPP remote. Pretty easy to do. Well, assuming that the SD card slot is functioning. And so I broke mine and had to send it back to Dave. Well, I didn't send it back to Dave right away. Got busy, you know, like things happened. And so it didn't go back to Dave right away. Well, we finally sent it to Dave like a year later. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and then, and so he fixed it and sent it back and you know, things happened again. So here we are today. So let's take a look at setting up the F-16 V4 controller, because the V5 is out now. It's really confusing. Um, the V4 as an FPP remote. And I'm assuming that the V5 will be similar. I, we'll see. I don't know. Um, so a couple of things, and it's pretty easy to do. So if, if you don't have any remotes currently, if you're running FPP, um, I believe X schedule is going to be very similar. I'm running FPP. So that's why I'm going to do this from an FPP perspective. Um, if you have no remotes, then you're just running it in player mode and that's fine. Um, cause you don't have anything to sync with. Um, so there is a one minor change that you have to make so that you will enable remote capability. And it's basically the player will send out sync packets to the remotes. And so if we go over to FPP, uh, ignore this part. It's looking for the controllers that are currently offline. No big deal. We're not running a show anyway. Uh, you want to go to status control, FPP settings, system, and you want this send multi-sync packets. And if you check that, if it wasn't, if it's already checked, you don't have to check it again. If it's not checked, um, it'll want you to restart FPPD to accept those changes. And then once it restarts, you're good to go again. Assuming your controllers are online. So to prepare the controller, first get you an SD card. Uh, now it has been tested. Let's see here. It's been tested up to 32 gig. Um, bigger ones may work, but it just hadn't been tested. Uh, it takes a UHS-1 class 10 XFAT or FAT32 formatted micro SD card. So I bought one from Amazon and it was already formatted in FAT32. So I just plugged it right in. There wasn't really anything for me to do. But if you want to, you know, go through the process, you format it um, FAT32 and power off the controller, put the card into the SD card slot. Now the, the label goes to the right, the contacts go to the left and down. This is a, a friction slot. It's not a, um, you know, spring loaded or anything. So just stick the card down in there. And if it doesn't go in there, then you may have it going the wrong way. But um, anyway, insert the card and then power on the controller. So if you open up a web page to your controller, it should look something like this. It will probably be set to E131 Artnet. 
um, which is basically, it's just taking data from the player and outputting it to the pixels. But what you want to do is change it to remote. Uh, you can set a start channel. I just left mine at one, hit set. And now the controller will reboot. And when it boots back up, it will boot up into remote mode. And the big difference there is that you'll see this down here, the, um, the what FSEQ is playing, none currently, and the position that it's in, and it's just the time. Um, now, I did uh, update to build 30 of the firmware, and I believe that is the latest firmware that is out there currently. If you're seeing this video later and there's a 32 or a 35 or a 382, um, just grab whatever the latest one is and load that onto the V4. So then now you have this player menu and you can go into file manager. And now I have already done loaded all my sequences on here. Um, uh, but you just, you can, you can upload an FSEQ, um, MP3 or wave. Now, since this is a remote, I'm just load, loading up the, uh, the FSEQ files. It, you can use this for me. It was very slow. So I don't know if you want to do that. You can maybe load one and then power down the controller, take the SD card out, put it in your computer and just copy all the FSEQ files that you want, that, you know, that are in your show over to this SD card. Uh, it would probably be a lot faster that way, but you can still upload it over the network if you want to. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention real quick. So the sequence files need to be in one of the following versions, either V1, V2 uncompressed, or V2 Zlib. Um, V2 Z standard is not supported. So, and I believe that's the default. So you need to go into X lights and uh, change the output format. Um, and, and you can do whichever one you want. Um, you know, whatever works for you. I just went with V2 uncompressed because I don't have more sequences than will fit on a 32 gigabyte SD card. Your situation may be different. You may have many more sequences. You may have a lot more data in the, uh, the FSEQ files. So, you know, just, just do whatever you need to do here. Um, and, and set X lights accordingly. Now you need to upload the output files to your master and all the different remotes. So this, this could be kind of a challenge if you have a lot of stuff. They need to be all the same so that they can sync with each other, uh, you know, the sync packets. They need to be all the same file all across your display. And so that's about it. So this, this is a screenshot of both browsers. One, the left is FPP. The one on the right is the uh, controller. And as you can see, I've got some, uh, a, a sequence playing and it's also playing on the remote. Okay. That's about it. I hope that was informative. We'll see you later. No, uh, I saw someone ask in the forums, uh, can it function as a master, you know, standalone, completely standalone controller? Yes, and I'll show you how to switch that over here. Now, if you are using this uh, to output audio, you will need to purchase a separate audio board to get audio out of the controller, but you can upload sequences and audio and uh, change this into master, and, and so it functions as just a normal master. So basically what you do is you change this to master, and you hit set. Controller will reboot. And now we are a master and you'll see, we've got a few more things here. Uh, and this menu now has changed. So now you have, instead, instead of just file manager, you have playlist schedules and continuous playlists are just lists of, uh, FSEQ files that you want to play. If you're playing audio, there would be audio in here too. I think when I set this up, I just add song. Yeah. So I just set the FSEQ thing there. There is no audio because I haven't uploaded any audio yet. Okay. If you don't save this playlist, when you hit uh, refresh, let me reload, then you don't save your changes. So make sure you save your changes anytime you make a change and you want to save it. Uh, if you go to schedules, oh, one thing about this. 
you can upload either MP3 or WAV files. This will only play WAV files. And if you upload an MP3, it will convert it. So it's it's a long process during during the upload. But but once it converts it, then you've got the WAV file, and that's what will be played, and that's what will show up in the menus and things like that. Now for schedules, uh, this is very similar. So you have, let me get my main playlist, the start date, the end date, start time, end time. Uh, let's say you only want to run it on Monday for some reason. I don't know why you would want to do that, but okay, we can do that. Um, and priority five. So priority six would take high priority. And this, what this is used for is if you have two playlists, that are they're overlapping they're in conflict with each other okay so let's say we have another playlist that is just music only um it's set up the exact same times and and you see here this 6 to 10 p.m is going to overlap with this whole day playlist and so that's what you want you want this priority five to play the show play all your sequences and then when it's done um you go back to your uh you you know, music for playing on the radio for the rest of the day or whatever. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, if you uncheck repeat, it'll only play once. Um, so don't, you probably don't want to uncheck repeat. Um, and then again, if you don't hit save and you hit refresh, then your changes won't be saved. So we'll do that, reload, and everything's gone. It's gone. So don't spend a lot of time in here and don't press save. Or in other words, Press save often. How about that? Continuous. So continuous just uh, lets you set a playlist to play all the time. And so if you set that, I'll turn this on. Uh, now if we go back to the status page, um, we are now playing my main playlist over and over and over again. So if, if the controller uses loses power when it comes back up, uh, then it'll, it'll start this again. So if you just have a very simple setup, you don't have a complicated schedule or anything like that, you can just use continuous. Uh, stop this. Oh. <laughs> As you see, it started again. So none set and now we're not playing anything. So if you need standalone functionality with the F16V4, that's how you set it up. Uh, you can get output, uh, audio output from a, by purchasing an audio board that, that just pops onto the board there and then you can get audio out that way. If you need audio, if you don't even need audio, um, then just set the board into master mode and you're good to go. And if you don't have remotes, you don't need master mode, you can use player mode. It's basically the same thing. It just doesn't send out the sync packets for the remotes if you have no remotes. If you have remotes, master's fine. You know, either way is fine. Um, that's just basically the difference between the two. That's about it. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Hopefully, you know, before a year and a half from now. Now I shot an email. Uh, I got six of these, and so they. I got five of these. I am your father.